Welcome to the tour video of the Recruitment Manager Excel template. In this video, we will take a look at the template live to go over its features. But before we do that, let's just recap the purpose of this template. This is to help manage our recruiting process. This can be used by a recruiting manager or a hiring manager to manage all the open positions in the organization and all the applications received for those open positions. We can also track the progress made on each of those applications as we make decisions on whether we move a specific candidate to the next stage in the process or make a decision not to move forward with that candidate. So we can track all the progress in this template and all the data related to this process will be managed in this one Excel file. And finally, fully automated reporting is available in this template, which will help measure and optimize our recruitment process. Now let's take a look at the template itself to go over its features. So now I have the template open and we're gonna see all the different sheets available in this template now. And please note that I've entered some sample data so that it'll be easy to illustrate the features of this template. When you download a copy of the file, you will not have the sample data in the file so that you can start immediately by entering your own information. Now, this is the home sheet where we have some tips to know before we start using the templates. And then we have instructions where how to do the standard data entry process, how, what do you do when you have a job order that has been canceled and all that details are provided here. So definitely look at the instructions first. And also please note that the support page and the product page are going to have a lot of information about the template. So I strongly recommend looking at those templates. If you have any questions about how the template works or any of the features that are included in the template. Now let's go to the next sheet settings, which is where we begin entering our data. The default values are here. We can enter up to six different recruitment stages. And if you don't have six, if you only have five, you can just remove the sixth stage. You can definitely rename any of these stages as they are in your organization. I'm gonna put the sixth stage back. The application sources are the list of sources that are uh, where you receive applications for your openings and also the decline reasons are the reasons why some of the application why the applications are declined and so you can enter more there are there can be up to 15 different sources and 15 different decline reasons uh, are supported in this template the job sheet is where we enter the jobs that are open. And in this case, I've entered about 50 jobs. And please note that uh, each job, you can have more than one position open. For example, the second row, we have programmer three is the job title, but we actually have two programmer threes open together in that one job order. So multiple positions are supported. And this is a new feature in the second version based on customer feedback from the first version. So now you, you can manage multiple positions being open at the same time for the same job title in a very simple way by entering one row. And it'll also be reflected as we go through to the applications sheet very shortly. Now, this is all the information about the job title, location, manager, department, recruiter name, importantly, job posted date, and then how many positions are open. These are the basic information about the jobs. And then once you have a job um, created, you want to keep it as open until you actually fill the positions. After it's filled, we will put completed. But if for some reason the job order is canceled, um, you can choose canceled here. Now, the, the cost is the cost incurred by the organization in filling these positions. So once you have completed hiring, put in the cost, and this is important to uh, important metric to measure our recruitment process. Then we have a couple of custom columns, which you can rename this and use it for uh, your own purposes. And then the completed date, these are all calculated fields, so please do not edit them. Uh, it'll tell you the number hired so far, number to hire yet, and then how many days this job has been in market and all that. So that those are all calculated fields. 
The application sheet is where we enter each application received. And so in this case for the job ID 36, the candidate Alan Morales applied through Indeed. That's the application source. And these six date fields are the dates when each application crosses a specific stage. So our first stage is the application stage. And so this specific candidate put in the application on 6th June. And then a phone screen was done on 8th June. The manager interview was done 9th June. An on-site interview was done on 18th. Offer was presented to the candidate on 19th. And finally, the hiring happened on 27th. So these are the six stages in this case. And the application status, we've chosen to be hired because we hired this person. If you did not hire a person, if you made a decision not to hire, we will choose not hired. And then whenever we choose not hired, it's good to note the reason why we declined, whether it's the decline from us or the decline from the candidate, it's good to note down the decline reason. And then any comments that you have about a specific application, you can put it in the comments field. And again, we have a couple of custom columns where you can rename and use it for your own needs. And we have a bunch of calculated columns that we are not going to edit, so I'm not going to go through them. The dashboard is where all the metrics are going to be calculated for us. And you can see on the left, we have filters or otherwise called slicers, which allow us to drill down if I want to only narrow down to the jobs related to a specific location, let's say Tokyo, I'm going to click Tokyo and you saw that all the metrics got updated for only those jobs. And if I don't want, I clear it, I see all of them. So the, there are about 10 filters or slicers available for us to drill down, uh, allows us to analyze the data very, very uh, in, in detail. And then the high level summary metrics are at the top number of uh, positions hired, how many applications do we need to process before hiring a position. Um, so it's about 3.6 applications per hire. And then the number of days it took on average to hire a position 31 days, how long how much does it cost per hire? Um, that's the amount here. And then how many positions are still open need to be filled? And how long have they been in market? So that's the uh, 114 days. Now, the recruitment funnel shows the six stages and you can uh, see how the, the funnel broke down as we went from one stage to the next. The monthly metrics are will show the last 12 months from the current month goes back 12 months and you'll see the number of hired and the days it took on average to hire. And then the pipeline efficiency of hiring. This is how long does it take for each stage in our recruitment process? As we know that it took 31 days in average to hire a person. Now, how does that 31 break down by the different stages? And that is what this wheel represents. And this will help us identify any bottlenecks in our process and help us optimize it to improve our efficiency. Then we have application sources. These are the top eight sources will be listed uh, based on the conversion rate, how, uh, how successful these sources are. In this case, we have 18 hires from th coming through the website as the application source. And that was about 33% of all the hiring that we did. And the conversion rate for the website is 51%, whereas LinkedIn, uh, the conversion rate is 29. So it is sorted based on that. And the top eight will be listed here. Similarly, top eight decline reasons are listed. So whenever we make a, a decision not to hire a candidate or the, the candidate decided not to accept the offer, let's say, then what are the decline reasons? And this is where those decline reasons are listed. Top eight and then the percentage. It is sorted based on the percentage of the uh, applications that were declined. So this will show the top eight to focus for our organization. And then the cost, total cost of hiring is listed here. And active pipeline, the, there are 69 pending applications that we need to process. And where are those 69 pending applications? Which stage in our funnel are they in? So that is what this represents. Finally, the comments, you can just type in any comment you have. Uh, if you're printing or sharing it in a PDF, 
then definitely you can enter your comments based on the observations that you made about the performance of recruiting in your organization based on all the data that's available here. You can write some comments and then export it to PDF or print. So this is our dashboard. And the job report is you can choose one job at a time. So in this case, we have chosen job ID 11 and we will see the details about the job, the current pipeline of the job, and then how many applications are pending. And on top of that, you can choose one specific stage and then you'll see if there are any applications in that stage for that job. So phone screen, we have one person and we decided not to hire that person and the comments were this. So these are the comments that are coming from the application sheet where we have the comments column. So the job report is nothing but a, a, a compact way of presenting only one job, all the details about the job, especially the comments that you have entered for the different applications or candidates. We will see all of them in one place so that we can make decisions um, in a relative way and also um, have it easily uh, documented and shared with other people involved in the process. So for example, if I choose the manager interview, I will see that the comments that we made and we have not made a decision on both of these candidates. So, you know, when you print and then you can discuss with the other people involved in hiring for this job and then uh, that will be helpful to have all the details about this job in one sheet. So you can have up to 25 candidates or applications for each stage and that is the limit. And now we have the candidates sheet. This is an optional sheet. This used to be a required sheet in the previous version, but in this version, it is an optional sheet. This is just for your information. If you need to store information about candidates, such as the names, location, contact information, strengths and weaknesses, and any comments that you want to store, uh, you could definitely use this. This is optional. You don't need to use this for the dashboard and the job report to work. This is just an add-on if you would like to store the candidate information separately for contact purposes. And we have a help terms sheet where the different calculations are defined so that you can see uh, and understand how the calculations are done. Those are all the different sheets in this template. If you have any questions about any of the things that we discussed in this video, please let me know in the comments and I'll be glad to respond. Thank you very much for watching the video. Please watch the demo video next where I will be taking a blank version of this template and start entering the data step by step so that you can understand how the data entry works. Thank you.